All right. So the next thing to talk about is the hydrogen seal oil. So the generator has 75 pounds of hydrogen inside it. So inside that casing, you have 75 pounds of gas, and that gas is trying to get out, and you got a shaft that has to penetrate, has to be able to move, has to have all the way around it. So it's going to try and blow out, and then hydrogen and air mix and become flammable at 4% oxygen, between 4 and 8, it's flammable between 8 and 75% oxygen, percent hydrogen in air. It's explosive, all that is bad. So to keep the hydrogen in, we have seal oil. So let's go. All right, so we've got shaft, we've got generator. So what we do is there is a header that goes all the way around that shaft and then there is a labyrinth seal So as the hydrogen is trying to get out, you've got oil that's pushing in, and the oil has a higher pressure than the hydrogen, so it wins. And so instead of hydrogen leaking out, you got oil leaking in. And you also got oil leaking out. our conditioning skit here. All right, so then we got a seal oil tank. And coming off of it, we got two AC pumps. Emergency seal oil pump. We got a control valve. We got a duplex strainer. Seals. So you've got a sensing line. So that there's a line coming in the bottom of this and a line coming in to the top. And one line is seeing the generator pressure. And the other line is seeing the oil pressure downstream of the strainer. And this valve is making sure that you have at least eight pounds higher on your oil. So that the oil pressure is always eight pounds higher than the gas pressure. There's also a research pump, so it pulls off the suction, 
it goes to a sprinkler header. It's probably higher, isn't it? Oh, no, it doesn't matter. Got a vapor extractor off of this. And the vapor has oil in it, so there's a little oil collection. The sight glass on it. And again, water might accumulate at the bottom of that sight glass vessel, and there's drain, so you can drain the water off. So that is supplying the oil, but then there's a question of what happens to it, right? We got to get it back because these things are typically a loop, right? So so we've got some of the oil that goes into the generator side and is exposed to the hydrogen, and some of the oil that goes out the air side. We don't want this, if this air side oil went back to the hydrogen skid and then recirculated up here and then came back here and went to the hydrogen side the next time, then you'd start to have oxygen accumulating in your generator. And that would create, yeah, your purity would go down and eventually you get the explosive hazard. So we got to keep this aerated oil separate from the hydrogenated oil. I said hydrogenated, and I'm not sure that's proper use of that word. All right. So the oil comes down on the inside and goes to hydrogen detraining. And then there's a drain off that that goes to a float tank. that goes back to the seal oil tank. And I want to draw that so it goes into the same line as the recirc, but I'm not sure that's true. So walk that shit down yourselves. All right. So this float is making sure that you don't run out of oil in this tank, right? This float, uh, float tank here, when the oil level goes down, the valve shuts, and then as the oil comes in, then the float comes up and it opens up and it lets the oil back into the seal oil tank system, right? So the intent is to never let hydrogen blow straight into the seal oil tank. That's what that float jobber there is for. All right. So then most of the oil is actually going to the air side, right? Because you got 75 pounds that's pushing against on the hydrogen side, you got nothing that's pushing against on the air side, so it's some of it's going that way because the pressure's higher, but most of it is going the way that is easier, right? Path of least resistance. That's what most of us do. Isn't that right, Terry? Yeah. Um, fuck it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so that goes to the air detraining, and you got a path. And you got a vent off the top. And we said we don't want this aerated oil going back into the hydrogen system. So instead, it goes to the lube oil tank. And the lube oil tank has vacuum, has extractors, air extractors on it that are pulling the air out of it. Well, if most of our oil 
is going to the lube oil system instead of going to the seal oil system, then that oil has to come back somehow. And where's it tie in? I think it ties in on the suction to the emergency pump. I'm not sure that's true. <laughs> All right. Well, that might be it. There's another, there's a sprinkler header for the recirc, and then there's another header for this return. So you got another one of those float valves, and this one is going shut to make sure the tank doesn't get too high. So you got oil turning, returning from uh, the hydrogen side. And that's gonna as that oil level comes up, then this valve pinches back. Are these going the same time? Huh? I'm not sure. Alright. So as the oil comes back into the tank, then this valve pinches off to control the level, keep it from going too high. If this tank's empty, then that floats all the way down, and that means this valve's all the way open, asking for all the oil it can get. And the, but if the main lube oil is running, then that's going to make up the difference, right? That's going to keep coming in there. And then this float is working the opposite. When it when this level goes down, it goes shut to keep you from draining it all out. When this valve level goes down, this valve goes open to get more oil in there. Might be it. That might be all I got, guys. It felt like a lot. Was it a lot? It's a complicated system. It is. It, it's really tricky to walk down. And, then, and there's ways you can line it up where this air detraining doesn't go back to the loop oil. Instead, it goes back here. And uh, that's not the normal way because it is less safe. But it can be done that way. I don't know. Reading the PowerPoint, I couldn't tell why you'd want to do it that way, but it's definitely an option. The, the Toshiba people that designed the system definitely thought that you could you could run this way on a purely research system. And also the way the when the DC pump runs, the it, the suction line for the DC pump is the return line for the other oil, so it kind of ends up taking the tank out of the system, and it just runs return straight back to the bearings. Now, I don't know why they decided to do that, but it's like that. It's a complicated system. When you walk it down, you'll, you'll, you'll appreciate that there's some convolution that goes on. All right.